All right, guys, today we're talking about how to scan an everyday object and utilize it in an augmented reality scene. All right, so what we're gonna to do today is take our phone and scan an object in your house. Now, I'm gonna use my own object here. Obviously, you use whatever you want from your own house. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan that object on our phone, we're gonna bring that onto a computer and then utilize that in an augmented reality scene that then we can place down on the ground or we can use like a image tracker to bring it out from. So, let's get ahead, let's go through onto the phone and get scanning. Okay, so let's start off by talking through the 3D scanning side of things. Now, in order to bring our everyday object into our scene, into our augmented reality scene, we need to scan it. And in order to do this, what we're gonna be doing is getting an object that's a relatively big-ish size. So this doesn't work very well for small objects, and we're going to scan that object. So to begin with, on our iPad here, we're gonna to go to the App Store, and we're going to search for 3D scanner app. You can hit search. And we're gonna be utilizing the 3D scanner app here, which we have already installed, uh, but you wanna install this onto your device and get into it. So what we then are utilizing this for is effectively to scan our local area. Now you can't uh, do this on a traditional device. If your device is not a LiDAR enabled, then unfortunately you, you just are not able to do this um, or it won't present a good result. Now, once we're in the app itself, what we're gonna be utilizing is firstly the high res mode. And this is gonna allow us to scan the object at a more in-depth uh, basis. So we can see around, um, you can see it's starting to map out. Effectively, the device is utilizing the LiDAR scanner in order to provide the best result. Um, that is, it's, it is able to detect the ground, the objects all throughout uh, the area. Now we're using the high res mode. Um, what we effectively need to do then is hit the record button. And this will begin to find areas within our local area. And so it's looking for dots and lines that intersect to draw the object in a virtual space. So you can see that it's picking up the mesh uh, around the area that we're scanning around. So if I scan around this entire object, what it's doing is slowly getting all the area mapped out in a virtual sense. And once we've completed obtaining all the area, we can see also the background is being picked up and, and a bit of the ground. What we can do once we've obtained it all is click stop on that. And that will show us the scan. And so we can see the scan of the object. We can see that there are some bumps in it and there are some missing gaps. So. It's not the most perfect one and also underneath uh, we can see through from underneath uh, the bottom so now what we need to do is we need to process the scan this is effectively texturing the scan so if we utilize the HD mode we click start it's then going to take its time to go through and take the uh, 3d map that we have on our screen at the moment the, the white one and it's going to map the textures to the object now we can see from that initial scan there how there were some bumps and there's some missing parts in the scan. What we need to do is um, try and hold the device as steadily as possible whilst sort of uh, painting around the object. So being able to easily and freely move around the object is very helpful, um, in which I didn't hear because you can see between the chair and this partial couch on the left here, I had this little gap. So that didn't really help in regards to getting the best result. So try and move your object into a free and open space. But what we're effectively trying to do is take this chair and being able to place it down in augmented reality through something like Spark AR, Unity, those sort of projects. So once we have this, what we need to do is we need to filter this down. So I'm gonna hit edit in the bottom menu there. And what we can do in the edit screen is a few different pieces, but the main one that we wanna do here is crop the chair or crop the, the model itself so that we'd have just the chair. So we get this little box that goes around the object 
and there's a, a wheel down the bottom as well. And this we can drag left and right in order to bring the box into different heights. So we just want to get the chair. So we're effectively going to uh, drag this in at each point. And we're just going to do it roughly here. Like we're not going to get too specific, but we're trying to capture the entire chair in and that's all. We want to get rid of all the extra data because it's it's not necessary. We don't want when someone places down the object uh, through Spark AR or the likes, we don't want all this extra pieces of information to come in. And so I'm going to crop the legs of the chair just slightly there to get rid of the ground as well. And so once you've done all that, you actually have to hit the word crop in the bottom here. Um, otherwise it doesn't crop. Even if you hit done, it just ignores everything that you just did. <laughs> so make sure you hit crop. And so what we get is our chair in an augmented space. And what we can hit here is we can hit save and we can overwrite the model with just the chair. And so now we have this 3D version of the chair, we can actually, without bringing this into Spark AR, without having to take it to another piece of software, we can actually click the AR button in the top right here to then bring this down into our local area. So we have our actual chair there, and I did not mean to place a chair on top of it, <laughs> but I did. And so we can have two chairs side by side, and obviously there is a bit of meshing issues at the moment where I need to rescan this object. But for the most part, it's looking pretty similar. So this is effectively what we want to do. We want to take now this 3D object and be able to utilize it in Spark AR. So how exactly do we do that? Well, firstly, let's get out, of, get out of this AR mode. And what we need to do is we need to bring the object onto our computer. So for me, I'm gonna use the share option. I'm then gonna keep it textured and to bring into something like Spark AR or Unity, um, I'm gonna utilize the FBX option. If you wanna take it into uh, some other pieces of software, uh, like Blender and the likes, um, you wanna cho choose the uh, the correct one for yourself. But in my case, I'm going to utilize the FBX. I'm going to bring this onto my computer through AirDrop and I'm going to come to you guys back inside an editor. Okay, so we're here in Spark AR now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in our chair object that we have scanned and brought onto our computer. And we're going to want to utilize this in a Spark AR scene. Now, in order to get to this point here, just as an FYI, uh, I went into Spark AR, I downloaded Spark AR, I uh, opened it up, I created a new project. Uh, when you create a new project, there are a few different um, base templates that you can utilize. Uh, and one of them is a ground plane tracker. Um, you also have face filter and you also have uh, image tracker and then just a basic no, give me nothing in it, like a bare package. And so I'm utilizing the ground plane tracker here and that's just going to allow us to get a little bit easier, like faster in to getting the uh, object on the ground. So in my case here, uh, if I go to my folders here, I have a chair scan.fbx file, which is the file that I've utilized from the scanner app. I've just airdropped it onto my computer. Um, I hope you're on a Mac because airdropping onto a computer is super easy. Um, anyway, we are dragging that file in and we can see in here we've got the chair object itself and then the material and textures that are related uh, to this uh, object itself. So with the chair scan in our project, what we can do is we can drag that into the plane tracker and that is going to allow us to see the chair in there. And we can see this in the preview up the top right here. Um, and we can move around where this chair would actually get placed down specifically. But that is the basics to getting uh, your object in. So if I duplicate that and I might just move it across, so I'll make it look like there's a little bit of a seating area here where there's one next to each other sort of thing. Uh, so let's, let's then move this guy across a little bit. And we'll move this one across just a little bit more. And so we can see in here that we've got two chairs that would get placed down. So I'm just gonna save this because I haven't saved it yet. And uh, let's just uh, spark AR project. And what we're gonna do is we're going to send this to our phone so that we're able to actually test this, test this out. And I don't know what I just did, but I didn't mean to do it. 
So we can utilize this test um, with device and test on device pro, uh, choice. Uh, there is the option to plug your phone in and it can just take your phone and bring up the Spark AR player um, application. There's, there's like a test application you can utilize. Alternatively, you can just send uh, an app preview to Facebook or Instagram um, to quickly get it. So I'm gonna use the Instagram one. I'm just gonna send that to myself because I've already uploaded a few different Instagram filters. Uh, so it should be pretty quick. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna stop recording here and I'm gonna go across to my phone so we can see and test that out there. Okay, so now I've got my uh, iPhone out. I've got the uh, filter open in the test mode at the moment, as you can see with the preview uh, piece down the bottom. And what we can basically do is we can tap to place these down. So we can tap to move them around at the moment. That's the only effect we have currently. Uh, but yeah, we can place these down. Currently, it thinks we're a bit, it's, it's quite a lot bigger to be honest um, from a scale perspective uh, compared to where it actually is which is um, quite surprising because the idea of the object is that it's supposed to be scanned and scaled um, to the same size. So there is a bit of a discrepancy there. So looking at reducing the size in Spark AR could be a good starting point. Uh, but effectively, we now have a place where we can take our 3D object that we scanned from the real world and place it into something like Spark AR that can be utilized for uh, everyday use in some sort of filter or however it needs to be utilized. But that's about it from the actual placing down in Spark AR side. And that's it guys, we've gone through, we've scanned that object, we've brought it into our computer and actually placed it into an augmented reality scene. Guys, if you have any ideas for videos, please put them down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to explore. Until next time, have a great day. See ya, peace.